Part 3. Meditations and Affirmations Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Job 22.28 Grounding yourself and running energy. This is a very simple visualization technique, and one which is good to do at the beginning of any meditation. The purpose of it is to get your energy flowing, dissolve any blocks, and keep you firmly connected to the physical plane so that you don't space out during meditation. Sit comfortably with your back straight, either in a chair or cross-legged on the floor. Close your eyes. Breathe slowly and deeply, counting down from 10 to 1 until you feel deeply relaxed. Imagine that there is a long cord attached to the base of your spine, extending down through the floor and way down into the earth. If you wish, you can imagine that this is like the root of a tree, growing deep into the ground. This is called a grounding cord. Now imagine that the energy of the earth is flowing up through this cord and up through the soles of your feet if you are sitting in a chair, and flowing up through all parts of your body and out through the top of your head. Picture this until you really feel the flow well established. Now imagine that the energy of the cosmos is flowing in through the top of your head, through your body and down through your grounding cord and your feet into the earth. Feel both these flows going in different directions and mixing harmoniously in your body. This meditation keeps you balanced between the cosmic energy of vision, fantasy, and imagination and the stable, earthy energy of the physical plane, a balance that will increase your sense of well-being and your power of manifestation. Opening the Energy Centers This is a meditation for healing and purifying your body and for getting your energy flowing. It is an excellent exercise to do in the morning when you first wake up or at the beginning of any meditation period or any time you want to be relaxed and refreshed. Again, I'd like to remind you that as I go through these exercises, I may not be allowing enough time for you to fully experience them. You may wish to go through them with me for practice, then turn off your tape player and go through them again at your own pace. Also, there is a creative visualization guided meditation tape available on which I take you through a full experience of many of the meditations from this book. Lie down on your back with arms at your sides or with hands clasped on your stomach. Close your eyes, relax, and breathe gently, deeply, and slowly. Imagine that there is a glowing sphere of golden light surrounding the top of your head. Breathe deeply and slowly in and out five times while you keep your attention on the sphere of light, feeling it radiate from the top of your head. Now allow your attention to move down to your throat. Again, imagine a golden sphere of light emanating from your throat area. Breathe slowly in and out five times with your attention on this light. Allow your attention to move down to the center of your chest. Once again, imagine the golden light radiating from the center of your chest. Again, take five deep breaths as you feel the energy expanding more and more. Next, put your attention on your solar plexus or the area of your navel. Visualize the sphere of golden light all around your midsection. Breathe into it slowly five times. Now visualize the light glowing in and around your pelvic area. Again, take five deep breaths, feeling the light energy radiating and expanding. 
Finally, visualize the glowing sphere of light around your feet and breathe into it five more times. Now imagine all six of the spheres of light glowing at once so that your body is like a strand of jewels radiating energy. Breathe deeply, and as you exhale, imagine energy flowing down along the outside of one side of your body from the top of your head to your feet. As you inhale, imagine it flowing up along the other side of your body to the top of your head. Circulate it around your body this way three times. Then visualize the flow of energy going from the top of your head down along the front of your body to your feet as you slowly exhale. As you inhale, feel it flow up along the back of your body to the top of your head. Circulate the flow in this direction three times. Now imagine that the energy is gathering at your feet and let it flow slowly up through the center of your body from your feet to your head, radiating from the top of your head like a fountain of light, then flowing back down the outside of your body to your feet. Repeat this several times or as long as you wish. When you finish this meditation, you will be deeply relaxed, yet energized and exhilarated. Creating your sanctuary. One of the first things you should do when you start using creative visualization is to create a sanctuary within yourself where you can go anytime you want to. Your sanctuary is your ideal place of relaxation, tranquility, and safety, and you can create it exactly as you want it. Close your eyes and relax in a comfortable position. Imagine yourself in some beautiful, natural environment. It can be any place that appeals to you, in a meadow, on a mountaintop, in the forest, beside the sea. It could even be under the ocean or on another planet. Wherever it is, it should feel comfortable, pleasant, and peaceful to you. Explore your environment. Noticing the visual details, the sounds and smells, any particular feelings or impressions you get about it. Now do anything you would like to do to make the place more homelike and comfortable. You might want to build some type of house or shelter there. Perhaps just surround the whole area with a golden light of protection and safety. Create and arrange things there for your convenience and enjoyment. Or do a ritual to establish it as your special place. From now on, this is your own personal inner sanctuary to which you can return any time just by closing your eyes and desiring to be there. You will always find it healing and relaxing to be there. It is also a place of special power for you, and you may wish to go there every time you do creative visualization. You may find that your sanctuary spontaneously changes from time to time, or that you want to make changes and additions to it. You can be very creative in your sanctuary and have lots of fun there. Just remember to retain the primary qualities of peacefulness, tranquility, and a feeling of absolute safety. Meeting your guide. All of us have all the wisdom and knowledge we ever need right within us. It is available to us through the intuitive mind, which is our connection with the universal intelligence. However, we often find it difficult to connect with our higher wisdom. One of the best ways to do so is by meeting and getting to know our inner guide. The inner guide is known by many different names, such as your counselor, spirit guide, imaginary friend, or master. It's a higher part of yourself which can come to you in many different forms, but usually comes in the form of a person or being whom you can talk to and relate to as a wise and loving friend. Here is an exercise to help you meet your spirit guide. Close your eyes and relax deeply. 
Go into your inner sanctuary and spend a few minutes there relaxing and getting oriented. Now imagine that within your sanctuary you are standing on a path that stretches off into the distance. You start to walk up the path and as you do, you see in the distance a form coming toward you, radiating a clear, bright light. As this form approaches, you begin to see whether the form is a man or a woman, or perhaps an animal. If it's a person, how old are they, and how are they dressed? The closer the form gets, the more details you can see of the face and appearance. Greet this being and ask what his or her name is. Take whatever name comes to you first and don't worry about it. Now show your guide around your sanctuary and explore it together. Your guide may point out some things that you've never seen there before. Or you may enjoy just being in each other's presence. Ask your guide if there is anything he or she would like to say to you or any advice he or she would like to give you at the moment. If you wish, you can ask some specific questions. You may get immediate answers, but if not, don't be discouraged. The answers will come to you in some form later. When the experience of being together feels complete for now, thank your guide and express your appreciation and ask him or her to come to meet you in your sanctuary again. Open your eyes and return to the outside world. People have many different types of experiences when meeting their guides, so it is difficult to generalize. Basically, if you feel good about your experience, then it's fine. If not, be creative and do whatever you need to do to change it. Don't worry if you did not perceive your guide clearly and precisely. Sometimes they remain in the form of a glow of light or a blurry, indistinct figure. The important thing is that you sense your guide's power, presence, and love. If your guide should come to you in the form of someone you know, that is fine unless you don't feel particularly good about it. In that case, repeat the exercise and request that your guide come to you in a form that is easy and pleasant for you to relate to. If the figure you encounter in your meditation seems judgmental, harsh, or unloving, you may have contacted your inner critic or some other energy. Politely thank them for their input. Let them go and ask for a loving, supportive, encouraging guide to come. Don't be surprised if your guide seems eccentric or unusual in some way. The form in which they show themselves to us springs from our own creative mind, which is limitless. For example, your guide may have a very unusual and surprising sense of humor, or an exotic name and a flair for the dramatic. Sometimes they don't communicate in words at all, but in a direct transmission of feeling impressions or intuitive knowledge. Your guide is there for you to call on any time you need or want extra guidance, wisdom, knowledge, support, creative inspiration, love, or companionship. Many people who have established relationships with their guides meet them every day in their meditation. Pink Bubble Technique This meditation exercise is simple and wonderfully effective. Sit or lie down comfortably, close your eyes, and breathe deeply, slowly, and naturally. Gradually relax deeper and deeper. Imagine something that you would like to manifest. Imagine that it has already happened. Picture it as clearly as possible in your mind. Now, in your mind's eye, surround your fantasy with a pink bubble. Put your goal inside the bubble. Pink is the color associated with the heart, and if this color vibration surrounds whatever you visualize, it will bring you only that which is in perfect affinity with your being. The third step is to let go of the bubble and imagine it floating off into the universe still containing your vision. This symbolizes that you are emotionally letting go of it. Now it is free to float around in the universe attracting and gathering energy for its manifestation. There is nothing more you need to do. 
Healing Meditations Here are some techniques that can be very effective for healing ourselves and others. Healing Ourselves This meditation can help us discover an underlying cause for an ailment and or begin to release and heal it. Sit or lie down, breathe, and relax deeply. Starting with your toes, feet, legs, pelvis, and so on, put your attention on each part of your body in turn and tell it to relax and let go of any tension. Feel all tension dissolving and draining away. If you wish to, do the meditation on opening the energy centers in order to get your energy really flowing. Now imagine golden healing light energy all around your body. Feel it, sense it, enjoy it. If there is a particular part of your body that has been ill or is in pain, Ask that part of you whether it has a message for you. Ask whether there is something you need to understand or to do right at this moment or in your life in general. Remain quiet for a few minutes and notice if any words, images, or feelings come to you in response to these questions. If you get an answer, do your best to understand and follow it. If you don't get an answer, just continue with the process. The answer may come to you later, perhaps in a different form than you expect. Now send special loving healing energy to that part of you and any part of you that needs it and see or feel it being healed. You may want to have your guide or any master or healer there to help you do the healing. Picture the problem dissolving and flowing away, or whatever image works for you. Now imagine yourself in natural, perfect health. Think of yourself in different situations feeling good, active, and healthy. Imagine nurturing and caring for yourself so you stay healthy. Here are some affirmations. I am loving and healing myself on all levels, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. I can get my needs met without getting sick. I am learning to take good care of myself. I love and accept my body completely. I am good to my body, and my body is good to me. I deserve to be healthy and feel good. I have now released all patterns of illness. I am free and healthy. My body is balanced in perfect harmony with the earth and the universe. I am energetic and full of vitality. I give thanks for ever-increasing health, beauty, and vitality. It's natural to feel good. From now on, each time you do this meditation, picture yourself in perfect health with golden healing light around you. Healing Others This meditation is to be done alone, not in the other person's presence, unless that person has requested this type of healing from you. You may or may not wish to tell the other person that you are doing healing meditations for them, depending on how well the person would accept that idea on a personality level. Relax deeply and do whatever type of preparation you wish in order to enter a deep, quiet state of mind. Think of yourself as a clear channel through which the healing energy of the universe is pouring This energy does not come from you personally, it comes from a higher source, and you serve to focus and direct it. Now picture or think of the person as clearly as you can. Ask him if there is anything in particular he would like you to do for him in your meditation. If so, do it to the best of your ability if it feels right to you. 
If you feel the impulse to work on healing a particular part of the person's body or a particular problem, do so. Just see all problems dissolved, everything being healed and functioning perfectly. Then picture him surrounded in golden healing light, looking radiantly healthy and happy. Speak to him directly in your mind. Remind him that he is being taken care of by a higher power and that he can heal if he desires. Tell him that you support him in being totally healthy and happy and that you will continue to send your loving support and energy. When you feel complete, open your eyes and come back to the outer world feeling refreshed, renewed, healthy, and invigorated. From now on, in your meditation, see the person as perfectly well. Don't give any more mental energy or power to the illness. Just keep seeing him as completely healed. You should not feel depleted from sending healing to another person, since it is not your own personal energy you are sending, but rather the universal life force flowing through you. If you do feel at all drained, you may be so emotionally involved that you are trying too hard. It might be helpful to imagine turning the healing of this person over to the higher power of the universe and affirming that whatever happens will be for his highest good. Remember, we can't always know what is the highest good for ourselves or another. Healing in Groups Healings are very powerful when done in groups. If the person to be healed is present in the room, have her lie down in the center or in a chair, whichever is most comfortable, with everyone else seated in a circle around her. Everyone should close their eyes, be quiet, and relax deeply. Then begin to imagine sending healing energy to the person in the center. Remember that it is the healing energy of the universe which is being channeled through you. See the person surrounded in golden light, feeling well, and in perfect health. If you wish, you can have everyone raise their hands with the palms facing out toward the person in the center and feel the energy flowing out to her through your hands. It can be especially powerful to have everyone chant the OM sound together for a few minutes while doing the healing, thus adding the healing vibration of sound to the process. If the person is not present in the room, just inform everyone of her name and the city where she is and then proceed as if she were there. The power of healing energy is not affected at all by distance, and I have seen as many miraculous cures accomplished for people in distant cities as for those present in the room. Invocations To invoke means to call in or to call upon. When used in meditation, invocation is a technique with which you can summon any type of energy or quality to come to you. Close your eyes and relax deeply. Do some type of preparatory meditation such as grounding and running energy or opening the energy centers or simply going to your sanctuary relaxing and breathing deeply for a while. When you feel relaxed and energized, say to yourself silently yet firmly and clearly, I now call forth the quality of love. Feel the energy of love coming to you or coming out from someplace inside of you, filling you up and radiating out from you. Remain for a few minutes, totally experiencing this feeling. Then, if you wish, direct it toward any particular goal through visualization and affirmation. You can use the power of invocation to summon any quality or energy that you want or need. Strength, wisdom, serenity, compassion, softness, warmth, clarity, intelligence, creativity, healing power. Simply make a strong, clear statement to yourself that this quality is now coming to you. If there is any particular master or teacher or hero with whom you resonate, Call upon him or her through invocation whenever you feel the need to manifest his or her special qualities within yourself. This type of meditation works beautifully when there is a special skill or talent that you wish to cultivate. For example, if you are studying music or art, call upon any great master in these fields whom you especially admire. Picture him or her supporting and helping you and feel the person's creative energy and genius flowing through you. 
it's not necessary to incorporate any personal problems or weaknesses that he or she may have had. You are summoning the person in his or her highest aspect. Many amazing results can be achieved through this meditation. Ways to use affirmations There are so many ways that affirmations can be used powerfully and effectively to give you a more positive, creative outlook and to help you achieve specific goals. Remember, it's important to feel relaxed as you affirm. Do not be addicted to getting results. Remember that you already are everything you need. Every improvement is just icing on the cake. In meditation, say affirmations to yourself silently while meditating or relaxing deeply, especially right before going to sleep or right after waking up. Spoken. One, say them to yourself silently or aloud throughout the day. Whenever you think of it, especially while driving, doing housework, or during other routine tasks. 2. Say them to yourself aloud while looking at yourself in the mirror. This is especially good for affirmations to improve your self-esteem and self-love. Look yourself right in the eyes and affirm your beauty, lovableness, and worthiness. If you feel uncomfortable, stick with it until you push through those barriers and are able to fully experience looking at yourself and loving yourself. You may find that some emotion arises and is released through this process. 3. Record your affirmations on a tape recorder and play them to yourself around the house, while driving, and so on. Use your name and try doing them in the first, second, and third persons. For example, I, Shakti, am deeply relaxed and centered in myself. Shakti, you are deeply relaxed and centered in yourself. Shakti is deeply relaxed and centered in herself. Or you can record a little speech, maybe three or four paragraphs long, describing your ideal visualization of yourself or a particular situation as if it were already true. This also can be done in the first, second, or third person. Written 1. Take a particular affirmation and write it out 10 or 20 times in succession, really thinking about the words as you write them. Change the affirmation as you go along if you think of better ways to say it. This is one of the most powerful techniques I've ever found and one of the easiest to do. I've devoted a chapter to it in Part 4. 2. Write or type out affirmations and paste them up in various places around your house or at your job as reminders. Good places are on the refrigerator, on your phone, on your mirror, on your desk, over your bed, or on your dining table. With others. 1. If you have a friend who wants to work on affirmations as well, you can do them very effectively with a partner. Sit facing each other, look into each other's eyes, and take turns saying affirmations to each other and accepting them. For example, David. Linda, you are a beautiful, loving, and creative person. Linda. Yes, I know. Or, yes, I am. Repeat this 10 or 15 times the same way. Then switch partners so that Linda says the affirmation to David and he agrees with it. Then try it in the first person. David says, I, David, am a beautiful, loving, and creative person. Linda says, Yes, you certainly are. Repeat several times. Be sure to say the affirmation sincerely and meaningfully, even if you feel a little silly at first. It's a wonderful opportunity to outflow love and support to another person, and to really support the other person in changing his or her negative concepts into positive ones. It's practically guaranteed that after doing this process together, you will be experiencing a deep, loving space together. 2. In a more informal way, ask your friends to say affirmations to you frequently. For example, if you want to affirm that you're learning to express yourself more easily, you might ask a good friend to say to you often, Jeannie, you are certainly speaking out and expressing yourself clearly these days. Make a game out of doing this for each other and you will find it helpful. We automatically tend to give a lot of power to what our friends say to us, for good or bad. Our minds tend to accept what others tell us about ourselves. So getting strong, positive feedback from friends in the form of affirmations really works. 3. Begin to include affirmations in your conversations. 
making strong, positive statements about things and people, including yourself, that you want to see in a more positive way. It's amazing what dramatic changes can be made in your life by just beginning to consciously speak more positively in daily conversation. A word of caution. Do not use this technique in such a way that you feel like you are contradicting your true feelings. Do not use it when you are feeling upset or strongly negative or it will feel like you are repressing yourself. Use it from a constructive space to help change your unconscious negative speech patterns and underlying assumptions. Singing and Chanting 1. Make a point of learning songs that affirm the reality you would like to create for yourself. Listen to them and sing them often. A large part of our present consciousness has been formed by popular music, which creates a reality in which we feel hopelessly dependent on our lovers, would die if they left us, wonder if life is worth living if we can't have a certain person, and so on. 2. Make up your own songs or simple chants using the affirmations you want to work with. More Affirmations Accepting Ourselves I love myself completely as I am, and I'm getting better all the time. I accept all my feelings as part of myself. I'm beautiful and lovable however I'm feeling. None of my feelings are negative. They are all important parts of who I am. It's good to express my feelings. I now give myself permission to express my feelings. Feeling good. It's okay for me to have fun and enjoy myself, and I do. I like to do things that make me feel good. I am deeply relaxed and centered. I now feel deep inner peace and serenity. I'm glad I was born, and I love being alive. Relationships. My relationships are mirrors that show me myself. My relationships are helping me to heal and love myself. I am strong, vulnerable, and loving in my relationships. I deserve love and sexual pleasure. I am now ready to accept a happy, fulfilling relationship. I love myself, and I naturally attract loving relationships into my life. I am now attracting exactly the kind of relationship I want. I am now divinely irresistible to my perfect mate. Opening Creativity I am now an open channel for creative energy. Creative ideas and inspiration are coming to me every day. I am the creator of my life. I am now creating my life exactly as I want it. Divine Love and Guidance Divine Love is doing its perfect work in this situation now for the good of all concerned. God is showing me the way now. My inner wisdom is guiding me now. I am now being guided to the perfect solution to this problem. The light within me is creating miracles in my body, mind, and affairs, here and now. <laughs>